Hey everyone, Paul ISM, welcome to, well, it's our new car medal meddling. My lord. Hi everyone, Paul ISM, welcome to, well, it's our new car modeling techniques video. Um, I've wanted this for a while, I've been asked many, many times. Um, and I said I'd never do it because I just didn't want to, basically. Uh, I've done a couple of build videos before. They really do sap your mojo because they can take quite a long time. But I've been asked more and more recently about different techniques to do for the vehicles, cars and bikes and what have you. And this is the best way of getting all the advice out there rather than snippets or answering the same questions over and over again, which isn't a problem. But it's much easier to link a video showing something than trying to explain it through written word. So... I'm hoping it's going to be a series of 10 videos. I've broken it down into subsections of how it works. Uh, I've done a review of the kit we're going to use, which is the Tamiya 1999 WRC Subaru Impreza. Uh, it's a kit I've built before, so that's quite good. It's behind me. It's actually right there. It is right there. Uh, I built that back in October when I got back into building cars properly. Um, and I think since, I think it's about September last year, uh, to now I've built very nearly 50 cars um, So quite a lot. I'm on build number 32 of this year already So I've kind of got my technique down how I like it um, As always it might not be the best way of doing it or the right way of doing it But it's my way of doing it. So that's what you're going to follow all the other techniques guides have done I know there's only technically one out there really uh, But the techniques that I've done before it's always been just my way Um so if something's wrong or you don't like the way it's done, there's not much you can do about it really. But I am just showing the way I do things. Like I say, I've done the way I'm going to build this is the way I built nearly every single car. And after doing nearly 50 of them, you get quite uh, quick at doing it. And I can build one of these cars in about seven days. I put about six to ten hours in a day though, uh, depending on how busy I am or what stage of the build I'm in. So if you only get a couple of hours a week, then you know that can equate to quite a long time. But I'm quite lucky because technically this is kind of my job in a way. So there we are. So we've got 10 sections. I'll run you through the sections. Give me a second to find it. I wasn't prepared. Excuse me. I have them all written down. Uh, I broke her up as, as good as I can into what I want to do. So we've got the intro, which is this. The review, which is already filmed and will be released um, straight away. Um, we've also got started off with the body and the wheel prep, which is what we're going to start with today. So I'll show you de-seaming the body, um, prepping it, gluing parts together, ready for paint. Uh, moving on to the next step, which is priming and base colours. So there's parts one and two. We've got decal. I've done a decaling video before, but never really went in depth. So we'll go a bit more in depth with that. Uh, we've got clear coats, so I'll be running through 2K. I'll explain other clear coats as well. But for our video purposes, we'll be just showing 2K in use. Again, I've done a video before, but I've moved on to different products now. So again, it's a slightly different way of spraying. Uh, what I call the running gear, which is basically engine, transmission, suspension, braking system, chassis, um, all the underneath running gear of the car. Now, the car kit we've got is a curbside kit. There's no engine in there as such. Underneath, you've got the bottom of the engine and transmission. It is there. Um, so there's not a lot to paint. But we'll detail it up, as I always do, and I'll show you how I do that. We'll then move on to the interior parts. That'll be your roll cage, the interior tub if there is one separately. Uh, we've got the seats. We've got the carbon and decal on the seats. Uh, paint on the dashboard, fire extinguishers, etc. And then we'll move on to seat belts inside the car as well. Uh, again, two different ways you can do it. You can then use the decals included with the most kits come with decals in the kit. Uh, I can show you those being used. Uh, or the way I do, which is using a fabric belt and photo etch, which again, I will show in use as well. Uh, we'll then move on to the glass works. So that'll be all the interior glass, the exterior lights, and any other clear parts are on there. So we'll show masking them, spraying them, hand painting them, so on and so forth. We then go what I call the black work, which is all the rubber around the windows. Anything else that means masking off bumper strips, um, etc. Anything at all, door handles and what have you, we'll show that as well. Uh, we've then got assembly, so that's where all the painted separate parts are glued together. I start with the running gear, that's all glued together. Then the interior goes together, the wheels go on, and we sort uh, the bodywork out from there. Uh, and then we've got finishing touches, so that will be putting the chassis on to the bodywork, gluing the glass in, um, antennas, 
putting the lights in, all the things that are done in the very last step. And um, I think we might even cover photography right at the very end. I am far from an expert of photography, but with a lot of help from people in my group, um, Al, uh, Jermaine, and what have you, uh, they give me a lot of help, and Graham as well. Sorry if I got Graham. Offer a lot of help, and I'm completely useless, but they help me get pretty decent pictures um, from just a simple camera as well. So we'll maybe go through that at the very last step. So that's that. So yeah, I want to try and do it. I want to keep the videos... <sighs> Although the technique, technique videos are 20 to, well, not 20, they were 45 minutes long, most of them. Building a plane, there's a lot of information to get in there. I'm hoping to make this a bit more concise and a bit shorter, and hoping for 20 minute to 30 minute videos, aiming towards the 20 minutes if I can. Uh, like today, this one's going to be a bit longer because I've had a lot to explain um, and what have you, but I'm hoping all the rest will be around 20 minutes. But if they go over, it's just the nature of the beast. I film all the footage uh, and then edit it together, and that's when you're left with how much you've got. Some pit, bits I can cut out, others I can't. Uh, this will all be voiceovered as well. I've got a proper microphone now, so hopefully it'll be a bit more clearer. Uh, there'll be less background noise, and like I say, I'll get to the point because I do like to repeat myself, and I do like to waffle a little bit as well. And there we are. So there we go. Uh, like I say, the kit's lovely. I've reviewed it. The review's already gone up. If you've seen this, the review's already up there. Might be a bit of confusion at first as to why I'm reviewing a 20-odd-year-old kit, but it'll become apparent in this video as we go through. It's a very good kit for the money. Like I say, through the review, it's a £17 kit. Uh, it's quite heavy. Uh, it comes with a mass set, okay decals, and it's a pretty simplistic kit to put together. It really is. So there we go. So I hope you're going to follow through the series. Like I say, this should be finished pretty quick. So I'm going to build uh, film as a build and uh, hopefully get these videos out every week, once a week. So over the next two, three months, this will be released every week. And uh, we'll go from there. So there we go. Right, let's move on to step one and let's head to the bench and have a look at this body. Okay, so here we are is the car body, uh, as it is out of the box. Pretty clean body, not too bad at all. There's four or five separate areas where you've got seam lines to remove, mainly around the front and rear bumpers. So there's one just across that section right there. You've also got the spotlight, well, fog light, spotlight covers to insert in there as well. Choose maybe you want the lights themselves or the blanks. Uh, across the back, there's a seam on the edge of the spoiler just there. And then right down the boot lid, it goes into the light, which isn't really much of a problem. It's hidden by the lights. Across the back of the bumper there, and all the way down the back of the side. And that's mirrored each side. So like I said, it's a pretty clean body from Tamiya. Nicely moulded, no real problems at all. And it takes a little bit of work to get rid of those seams. But more importantly, it's going to take quite a bit of work to get rid of the seams on the spotlight covers. Now, the sand you're going to use, you've got the UMP 400 Thinny Stick. We've got the UMP Thinny uh, sponge sander 240, uh, the UMP Thinny Buffer, and the UMP Full Size Buffer Sponge as well. These will make short work of those seams. Also, we're using some of the brand new customizable sanders from myself and the UMP in the various grades, um, and these prove very handy for getting into tricky areas. Now, the glue we're going to use, we've got Tamiya Extra Thin. This is the industry standard glue most people use. And mine is mixed 50-50 with EMA model supplies plastic weld. Uh, the plastic weld has mech in it, M-E-K, which is a very hot glue. And mixed 50-50 with the Tamiya uh, glue. It works fantastic. Um, cutters, we've got Zorons and Tamiyas. For this, I'll be using the Tamiyas. They're much more precise. And get right in there to the sprues. Cutting nice and flush and not leaving a lot to sand. So, we're going to start on the body. Like I say, it's a pretty clean body, which is quite handy from Tamiya. Most of their car kits are like this. Now, a lot of people use a Sharpie, and they will go around all the seams and mark them out. I don't like to do that. I use my eye and have a good look around, and you can pick them out uh, with your eye. Worst comes to worst, you'll notice it when you're, pri you're primed, and then it's just a case of re-sanding and re-priming. But for most part, try and get rid of them first time round. Uh, to save a lot of aggro and work later on. Now we're using the 240 sponge sander, the thinny one, and we're just giving it light pressure over those uh, raised seams. Not pressing too hard, we don't want to lose any other detail that's on the body at all. And we're just going to systematically go around through all the different angles, using the different sanders for different purposes, and find out what works best for each situation. Uh, it's a bit laborious and it takes quite a lot of time, 
but it's an important step and it shows through with the finished article at the end because if you do have any seams that are still there you will more than likely see them uh, now like i say on this car uh, there's only four on the front and rear they're pretty easy to take care of um, sadly those front spotlight covers are a pain you can choose between having the spotlights themselves or the blanks as on the real car uh, unfortunately though the way that these fit on uh, as you'll see in a little bit the seam line that's there isn't there on the real car so you've got to get rid of it with a bit of filling and sanding and it does take a little bit of time but I'll show you how I do it shortly so like I say we're just taking care of this light seam at the front applying no real pressure with the sander just lightly scribing scribing sanding back and forth uh, until we're happy that it's gone and any tricky areas we're grabbing one of the customizable sanders and cutting it on an angle in a triangular shape a couple of light passes with a knife cuts it off and that gives you a really nice angular shape this is the 400 grit and it'll now allow me to get right into those corners where thicker sanding sticks or sponges will struggle and again applying no pressure we don't want to lose the, the raised detail that's supposed to be there around the light cluster uh, but we are just trying to get rid of the seam where it'll go up the natural curve of the body and it just needs light pressure no real pressure at all quick blow of the dust and a check and you'll see that it's gone and again on the lower half there's a bit of a seam into that corner it's basically where the natural arches or curves of the bodywork go you always end up with a little seam still stuck in there because because you can't get to it with a normal sander so cutting these to shape really does help remove those seams quick check with a fingernail as long as you can't feel it you should be good to go and if not just keep going at it until you're happy that it's finally gone okay so once you're happy that you've got the um, majority out with the customizable sander again quick fingernail checks make sure there's nothing there and then on to the buffer this is the thinny buffer uh, and this will polish the plastic back up to basically new plastic very handy tool and it will bring this plastic up to a lovely shine so we're just going around this systematically covering all the angles and the edges and what have you and again no real pressure you'll get the pressure in a minute when you're giving it a final buff uh, but for this part now it's not going to be too bad at all uh, so again just go around checking you get everywhere once you're happy spin it around to the white side and give it a final buff polish up until you get that squeaky noise and again just quick fingernail checks make sure you have missed anything and there we go job done so you need to go all around the body to take care of all these uh, there's another three so there's one there two on the back either side and on the boot lid itself as well um, onto the spotlight covers now like i say now you can either have the spotlights there with a the glass in or you can have the blanks i'm just looking for them on the sprue now uh there they are we're going to go for the blanks on this because i don't want the light pod on the bonnet i like the look of the cleaner front end so we're going to cut these parts off now we've got our tamiya sprue cutters and we're getting up nice and close to the edge of the part and cutting it flush the tamiya cutters are very very high quality and uh, will quite happily cut nice and neat so once we cut them off i'm going to zoom in a little bit and then we're going to sand them flush at the top so we've got the 400 thinny stick and we're just going to keep it on the correct angle and very lightly sand away those uh, sprue points until we're happy that they're gone on each side a little wipe across the front to ensure there's nothing left have a quick look onto the other one do the same with that and cutting these flush and sand them smooth will ensure that they fit properly where they should go. There we go. Happy that the door. We now get the buffer again. Give them a light buff. Once we're happy with that, we'll test fit them into place on the body. And if all is good, we shall glue them in place. Now, like I say, I'm using the Tammy Extra Thin, thin well, mix 50-50 with the Plast Weld. Like I said, the Plast Weld is a majority of MEK. Oh, methyl ethyl ketone, I believe it is, uh, which is a very potent plastic glue. Uh, used on its own, it evaporates very quickly and is a little bit awkward to use. Mixed with the Tammy Extra Thin, it works fantastic. Not only does it dry quick, it also um, glues really well. Metal plastic well, 
and really welds these parts together basically. So a quick wipe over the top just to get it all pinned in and then we'll go around each part ensuring it's all pinned in place and once happy give it a little push because this can help fill the gap and again make sure you don't get any on your fingers and then go and put your finger on the body because it starts leaving fingerprints everywhere which are never good and always tend to leave a bit of a mark behind. Like I said, in case you go around, make sure it's all glued, and then once you're happy it's all in place, give it a light push, and see if you can close up a little bit of that gap, saving a little bit of work later on. Like I said, this 50-50 mix does work very well. It's a little bit more controllable, while making the Tammy Extra Thin a little bit hotter. Uh, there you go, a little bit of glue on my finger, so wipe it off, make sure you don't put it back on. And there we go, that's in place. Once dry, we can sand it smooth, and then we only, if it needs to, we can give it a bit of filler and sand it all nice and thin. Really easy. Okay, now the rear spoiler part. So, uh, cut these off exactly as before, uh, nice and close with the Tamiya sprue cutters. These quality sprue cutters are really worth having. They're not cheap, uh, but good tools will save you a lot of time. And we're going to sand this exactly like we did with the spotlight covers using a sponge for the most part on this so we don't damage any of the uh, rounded edges once these parts are all cleaned up we're then going to put the side parts of the wing uh, loosely on the car body on both sides and then put the top part on and this will position the spoiler in the correct place ready for gluing we are going to leave the spoiler off as we are with the roof vent um, so make it easier for spraying and all we're going to do, offer it up, make sure it's pretty straight where you are. Bit of glue, not an excess, just enough. You can see me wiping it off. And then glue it in place. Give it a little squeeze, not a lot. Not a lot. And just hold it in place. And there we go. Uh, the body will hold it, and we haven't glued anything to the body at all. This is just so we can glue the top part on. And I'm just making sure it's all nice and straight where I want it. And then that can be left um, to dry. It's going to get a little bit of glue underneath as well. And this, you need to be very careful. You don't run any onto your fingers now. You can see I've just lifted my finger up out of the way. I want you happy. Leave it alone. Or if you're me, you could drop it on the bench, pick it up, and it all falls apart on you. But try not to drop it. <laughs> but at least this way, I know it's glued and it is in the correct position. It does hold itself on the car pretty well. And again, if you do move it, just have a check that it is straight because once it's dry, it becomes a lot more difficult to actually move. And there we go. Looking good to me. There we are. Right, there's also a front intake scoop for the bonnet as well. So this needs a bit of extra special care when cutting off. Uh, because of the shape and the position, uh, you need to make sure it's very, very careful sanding and even more so very careful gluing. Any mistakes here will show through and you will see it on the finished model. So cut it flush but not too close. Uh, have a look. If there's anything extra you can carefully remove, take it off now. So I'm probably going within a hair's, hair's breadth of the edge of this and then very lightly using the sponge. Basically, if any parts are rounded or have an edge, use a sponge. If they're flat, use a thinny stick sander, a rigid sander. And all we're doing is just taking the edge off, making sure it's not taking any of the profile of the part off. Because this will look odd when you glue it on. Once you're happy, again, give it a little buff. Bit of a blow. And then, once you're happy with that, give it a polish and get it squeaky clean plastic again. Uh, always worthwhile with these parts to double check that they fit before you start committing to glue uh, and it's it's worthwhile just to check as I'm about to that it fits in make a note of any gaps or any places if it needs moving further forward or back or if it's going to actually need uh, any filling anywhere right so we're going to put a little couple of drops of the glue onto the inner part of the surface don't put too much on, or as you put this part on now, it will squeeze out and it will ruin the natural uh, panel line that's there. Give that a minute or two just to dry. It's only going to hold it, it's not really going to glue it. Whilst we're doing that, we'll look for the roof scoop. And again, we're going to cut that off 
and sound that exactly the same as we did for the bonnet hood intake hood sorry there we go again cutting it smooth and we'll sand it in exactly the same way okay once that is cleaned up we'll now offer it in place we're not going to glue it in place just yet but this is going to give you a look of what it's going to look like it's spoiler looks good as does the roof vent and the bonnet intake as well um so now the spoiler's dried a little bit we can take it off have a little look make sure everything's okay and like i say if it's still loose and you're unhappy just pop it back on and make sure it's still in the same place and then once you're happy uh, like i say this glue does dry a lot quicker than the standard standard tamia uh you can then move her out of the way so we're just having a look at the uh the bonnet scoop there making sure it's where we want it and now we're going to apply a little bit of glue on the top so for this we're going to really wipe off that brush and apply the real bare minimum of glue uh, where we can allow capillary action to carry the glue into the joint we do not want to fill the panel line at all it's a natural panel line on the car and we're just going to systematically go around allow the glue to flow in and that will set of its own free will uh, as you see at the end though, I will give it a gentle push in just to make sure any glue that's in there does get pushed fully home because it does kind of sift funny this. There is a slight gap at the front. So just a gentle prod, making sure, yeah, we're all in place and there we go. Superb, job done. So looking at that, we're all ready to go. Uh, we've got the rest of these panel lines to deal with, including these lovely spotlight covers at the front, which are glued in place fully. I'll zoom in so you can have a look. There we go. So as you can see, on the top, you can see where they are glued. That whole line at the top and the side, there and there. And at the bottom, where I'm going to point, which is there, each side. And there. That is not there on the real car. That is smooth part of bumper. So on this, we want to fill it. So we'll put this aside, let the glue dry for a good few hours. And once it's fully dry, we shall come back and uh, sand them smooth and apply filler if needed. Okay, onto the wheels. So, as you can see, these are in the middle of a sprue. And what I like to do is cut them out, leaving all the wheels still attached to the sprue part. So, just some very careful cutting. And we will get a square of sprue out of the entire thing. And it makes life so much easier for painting these. Um, otherwise, you've got to mount them on cocktail sticks or stick them to a box or something. And this is a really easy way of doing it. So there you go. Nice and easy sprue to paint. Obviously, locate a pointer at the back. So you're not going to get any paint there. And we just put on some reverse tweezers. And voila, job done. Okay, so now the car body's been sat around for a few hours drying. The uh, Tamar Extra Thin Mixed Glue has fully dried. We've got a few tools with us. First off, we've got a toothbrush. We've got super glue. We've got super glue kicker. We've got some micro brushes. We've got a little part for holding the glue. Like I said, we've got a zip kicker. Super glue instant drying kicker. And our CO choice, which is the Deluxe Rocket, Rocket Rapid CA glue. So, like I say, these have all been allowed to dry now. Um, we've sanded flush as much as possible, as you will see in a second. There we go. So just use the sponges exactly like we did on the other uh, seams to remove any glue marks. And you can see now the gaps that are left present um, from the gluing um, procedure. So we want to fill these in. And the way we're going to do those is using CA glue. That's my favorite form of filler. To fill these in now you can use any kind of glue you want uh fill you want um be a plastic putty or whatever you've got um but do bear in mind a lot of these putties do shrink so it may take a couple of applications to do and uh you may six months down the line look at the model and yes you've got a panel line there a seam line again CA glue is better in my opinion it dries quicker dries harder it's easy to sand and it's really useful so there we go, we get the toothbrush in, clean out any sanding residue, and this cleans out any uh, sanding residue that's in the gaps still, because that can interfere with filling, or I think it can. It probably helps it as well, but for me, I like to start afresh. So we put some CA glue in the little blue uh, bung, and we're going to use a cocktail stick, or a toothpick, to apply it around 
that gap, filling it in. As you see, I'm just going to dab it into the front bits, like so. And I'm going to grab a bigger bit, pop it on, and drag it right across. There we go. Even if you don't think there's a seam there, I will still put the CA glue there. Um, just as a matter of course, really, a precaution. So there's the top part done, as you can see. So you can then let this sit around and dry naturally, or you can use the super glue kicker, which will instantly cure it. I mean, you can work on it almost straight away. So we're doing the bottom parts now. Just the two lines. Don't do the bottom line because it's a natural panel line of the car. Again, in the front splitter at the front. So you're just doing the sides. So we're done along the top there. Just double checking that we're all happily in. Down the front. Apply a little bit more if needed. Very easy to sand the igloo. No real drama at all. And we're just going to do the other side. Again, drag it across. And along the front now you may find you might need multiple applications um, it is a very tricky part of the car and it is this car's Achilles heel unfortunately but get through this and the rest of it is plain sailing I promise you it's laborious and boring rather than hard so there we go so we've got Seagull where we want it so I'm a quick look around and a check now we're gonna move the Seagull out of the way and we're gonna get our zip kicker so Rather than spread it on the model, don't do that, because it causes damage and problems later on down the line. Spray a little bit into the lid. Get these little micro brushes which you can get on Amazon and eBay. They're fairly cheap, disposable brushes. Dip it in, wipe off the excess, and then lightly touch it to the CA glue. You will literally see it instantly dry in front of you. Put a little bit more. And just lightly touch it. Now, be very careful of this stuff, because it is quite potent. Uh, using it on aircraft I have had seams pop back open so use it very sparingly and you can almost literally pass it by the CA glue and it will dry it hence me removing the CA glue out of the way because even the fumes will cause it to start drying so doing this this way the CA glue is sandable almost instantly and it just speeds up the filling procedure uh, immensely allows to sand it check fill it sand it straight away and it's a very, very fast way of dealing with seams. Like I say, these are tricky. They're awkward to sand. Uh, they're not difficult. They're just awkward. So once you're happy, you've got all the kicker around it. Have a little prod around with a cocktail stick. As you can see, that's nice and hard. That's going nowhere. And then we can start the sanding process. Okay, once you're happy that that's dry and filled as good as possible, it's time to break out the sanders again. So we've got the 400 thinny stick, the 240 sponge, and a buffer. Now what you'll see, I've adapted this sponge sander, and you'll see why in a little bit. But first off, we're going to deal with this top part. And it's a case of just being gentle on the edges so you don't wear them away. And using the appropriate tool for the right job. So we're going between the sponge sander, the rigid thinny stick, and the customizable sander to deal with the parts we need. Uh, you don't be using the flat, uh, customizable or thinny sticks on all these top parts because they are rounded edges. You do not want to be squaring them off because it will ruin the profile of the bumper. But it's a case of, you can see where the CA glue is for the most part. And it's a case of switching between them, going back and forth until the seam is dealt with. And like I say, it's a bit laborious, but it is a case of just sanding, sanding away until you're happy that A, the excess CA glue is gone, and B, that the gap is filled. If along the way you do notice the gap still, again, you can stop, you can refill it, add a bit more CA glue, a little bit more kicker, and just keep working away at it. But the thing is, you know, you can always fill it again, you can't re-add material if you lose it. Fingernails are great for this, because you can feel where the gaps are or aren't, and the idea of this is to get a seamless um, front bumper, which is what we're going for. So this is probably going to take a good while to do. So I'm not going to sit here and watch me sand it all. Uh, but we'll come back for the more uh, important part. So I'm going to stick with this. And we'll come back in a minute and have a look how I get on. Okay, I've completely sanded all the right-hand side. Well, the right-hand as we look at it. 
part of there the top and bottom is all done and the top of the left hand side is for the most part done I'm going to show you how to do the tricky part underneath so I've got a 240 sander I've removed the top part of the material and that allows it to fit into the intake uh, again along with the customizable sander we can get right in there and it's probably the trickiest part of filling this in so again get the sander have a little look uh, at the top there was a couple of pieces that hadn't quite filled properly so I've just added a couple more dot of CA glue and whilst they fully dry we'll deal with this tricky bottom part so putting the sander on an angle as you can see we can get it right into that intake get it on an angle and start to deal with that tricky little seam like I say you are sadly butchering a sander but you'll be surprised how often this little trick comes in handy so it's a handy sander to keep uh, available and uh, like I say, it fits right in there. And anywhere else you can't get, grab a customizable sander, cut it on an angle like this, and you'll be able to get right in there, up close, and take care of that very tricky seam. Like I say, it is a laborious part of this kit, but once you pass this, it, it's 20 minutes to 30 minutes work of sanding, and it's gone. Or, like I say, if you're not all that bothered, leave it be, and just carry on with the build as normal. Again, we've got a nice thin stick of it cut off now, the customizable sander. The 400 is my favourite grit. And I'm just lightly taking away any remnants of CA glue. CA glue is pretty obvious on the model kit because it's raised. You can physically see it, uh, which is quite nice. You know when it's gone because you can literally see that the plaster becomes smooth. And as before, it's a case of going around until you're happy, then give it a final buff up and job done. All the uh, seams are dealt with. And we can move on to the next step. Okay, so we're all dealt with, all happily sanded. So I'm going to go finally round with the um, the buffer just to ensure everything is as a wish and as a final check. Uh, so lightly buffing away with the blue side, the abrasive side. Once we're happy with that, we'll come back with the white side and polish it up to a high shine. Obviously, taking care to get into intake, the, the thinny buffer fits straight in, thankfully. It doesn't need buttering to get in there. And just careful, you know, make notice of any part. You want this to be as smooth as possible. Once you're happy with that, toothbrush, very handy uh, tip uh, Norman Dennison passed on to me. Uh, use a toothbrush, get rid of excess dust, and uh, it's a very handy tool. Multitude of uses, but for this, getting rid of any excess dust out of panel lines, you can really have a good look at what there is then. Under good lights, and as you can see, those are both filled nicely top and bottom. Very happy with that. Probably all in mm, 30 to 40 minutes work. Like I say, it's more boring than anything, uh, but it's a worthy step. Again, go over all the other parts that were sanded, have a good visual check, making sure we're happy with everything. And then finally, double check the spoiler still fits, which it does absolutely lovely. Hold itself on there, which is nice. And that the roof vent goes on, no problem as well. And there we go. There's our body all sanded, all filled, and ready for the next step, which is uh, prep for priming and painting. Okay, so there we go. As you've seen, there's a few laborious little parts to do there. It's probably one of the most boring parts of a car build. But it's worth paying that extra time. Just have a good look around the body. Check for seams. Make sure you haven't missed any. And take care of any imperfections as and when you can. Nothing more frustrating than thinking you're taking care of something. To prime it and it's still there glaring you in the face. So it is well worth spending a little bit of time. Like I said with the right tools. With the correct sanders. UMP sanders being ideal. Hint hint. Uh, and those excellent customizable sanders being cut to shape. You can get right on those little nooks and crannies. And take care of any seams that will be an issue at all. So they are very, very handy. Uh, like I say, the most laborious part of this kit is those front spotlight inserts. Um, they're a bit of a pain to fill in. But if you look at the real car, the bumper on the real car, those seam lines are not there. If you choose to leave them in, by all means, that's up to you. It's your model. But for me, getting rid of them is quite an important stage. And as you saw, a little bit of careful gluing, filling and sanding. They're gone before you know it really. They're gone in no time at all. And there we are. So there you go, there's part one. If you haven't waffled on too long, you find it useful. I'm going to try and release these every week. Um, so you should have videos now for the next two to three months. Um, we'll be back with part two next week, which will cover uh, prepping for priming and painting. So we'll include get rid of any dust off the model, uh, degreasing it, 
mounting all the parts ready for spray because the spoiler's still loose, as is that roof scoop and the body and the wheels. So we've got four components to clean, prime, and spray. And that will be right across the board uh, from priming, base color, and clear coat. All those parts will be kept separate until the end. There's a reason for doing it, and that'll become more apparent as we, as we start to paint it. Uh, it just makes life a little bit easier, and again, it's lessons learned. You can put the scoop on now if you want, but you'll find it more difficult to mask with the window rubbers at the end. So it's worth just leaving things off for a little bit, and you'll get a better paint job as well. And there we are. So like I said, we're back for part two in about a week, uh, and we'll cover degreasing it, de-dusting it, priming it, and the base colour prep as well. Try and get all that in one video, so we'll be in the spray booth for the most part next time, and uh, we'll have a look at the materials used and what we're going to do there. There we go. Hope you found that useful, and hope you're going to find this entire series useful. Um, this car will be built well before this series is all aired, and you probably will see it on Facebook. Uh, like I say, I have built the car before, so it'd be nice to see an early comparison to a newer one, because I've never been happy with the original car. Uh, there's quite a few flaws on it, which I'll show at the end of the series, and we'll compare them side by side. So there you go. As always, check out the Forum International Scale Modeler Facebook page and Forum. Uh, they're both free to sign up and join. You've got this channel you're on now. Sub to us, leave us any comments. I reply to every comment. If you've got a comment about this build or anything you want to ask, please ask. I will answer you. Uh, I get every comment through to me. Uh, check out umpretail.com where you get all our standards from um, and any of the UMP materials shown throughout this build. I'm going to plug them into my business. I'd be daft not to. Uh, check out the uh, the live show every Friday night on ISM's channel, the channel you're on now. Uh, half 7 UK, half 8 Europe on 30 Century US. I've got my modelling page, Paul ISM, and we've also got the Hangout Offer group as well. All the links for any of these are in the uh, description down below. And like I say, if you've got any questions or comments you want to leave, please let me know uh, and I'll address them as I go. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all next time. Take care. Bye bye.